In this video, we are going to talk about proof of evolution that you can find on your body. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. Evolution is a scientific theory supported by an overwhelming amount of evidence. Some Christians fear that accepting the theory means rejecting God as a creator. But that just doesn't follow. Christians accept scientific theories about the weather, the formation of mountains, and even the conception and development of individual human beings while still acknowledging that God is the creator and sustainer of these things. So giving a scientific description for a process does not rule out a legitimate theological description of the process as well. This video summarizes multiple proofs of human evolution. Number 16. Changing Brains. According to studies, our brains have been shrinking over the past 20,000 years or so. According to University of Wisconsin anthropologist John Hawkes, it has happened wherever we look in Asia, Europe, and Africa. We may be becoming more intelligent, or we may simply be becoming more efficient. In either case, our daily activities are transforming our brains, though we're not rewiring neurons in ways that will be handed down genetically, modern smartphone users' brains and thumbs have different sorts of connections than people who haven't been scrolling through Facebook on tiny displays. Number 15. Blue Eyes. Until 600 to 10,000 years ago, all humans had brown eyes, when a genetic mutation resulted in altogether new eye color. Blue eyes have survived despite having no evident evolutionary benefit, around one in every six Americans presently has blue eyes. That's down from over half of all Americans born around the turn of the century having blue eyes. Researchers believe that, unlike 100 years before, fewer people now marry within their ethnic group, allowing the recessive characteristic of blue eyes to be passed down. Number 14. The Ability to Drink Milk. As a result of lifestyle and cultural circumstances, certain human features have evolved considerably more recently in our species' history. Lactase, the enzyme necessary to digest milk, was only generated by newborns 10,000 years ago. When humans began rearing cattle and camels in Northern Europe, East Africa, and the Middle East, persons with the genetic variant that allowed them to continue producing lactase into adulthood had a nutritional advantage and passed their genes on. More than 90% of people nowadays can consume milk. Number 13. Palmer Grasp Reflex. Newborn humans seem helpless and weak, but they have a remarkably strong grasp, which is likely a holdover from when they needed to grab one of their, hairy, parents to be carried around. Many newborns nowadays can grip securely enough to support their own weight. The response lasts for around four months and can be seen in newborns' feet. Number 12. Hiccups. During a hiccup, the muscles used to inhale contract, while the tongue and the roof of the mouth slam shut the voice cords at the same moment. Human hiccups serve no use, but tadpoles take in a mouthful of water, seal the opening to the lungs, and drive the water out via their gills when they're breathing underwater at a period when they have both lungs and gills. Because the signal that starts hiccup-like activity comes from the brainstem in both humans and amphibians, experts believe that hiccups are a relic from our fishy ancestors. Number 11. Nipples on men. These aren't quite the remains of generations of evolution, but they do show how the human body evolves. Male and female embryos develop in almost identical patterns throughout the first several weeks of pregnancy. Around week 6 or 7, genes on the Y chromosome drive male embryos to form testes, which subsequently begin releasing testosterone around week 9, triggering the development of masculine traits. Nipples have already developed by then, and they stick. Number 10. Whisker Muscles. Except for anteaters, platypuses, and humans, almost all mammals have whiskers. Whiskers are often supersensitive to a range of stimuli and may tell the animal a lot about its environment, even in the dark a seal can grab a fish while blinded and wearing headphones. Humans have evolved to get information through other senses, yet we still have microscopic vestigial muscles in our top lips that controlled whiskers at some stage in our evolution. Number 9. Pyramidalis and Sternalis. These two muscles are so insignificant that many people do not have them at all, and no one would know the difference without a surgical examination or sophisticated imaging. 
The pyramidal is a little muscle that runs over the top of the pectoral muscles in only about 8% of the population, and the sternalis is a tiny muscle that runs over the top of the pectoral muscles in only about 8% of the population. Number 8. Plantaris. In 90% of persons with this muscle, it is located near the top of the lower thigh. It does assist bend the knee, but just slightly those without one don't notice. Because the tendon that attaches to the plantaris muscle is the longest in the body, it, like the palmaris longest tendon in the arm, can be extremely valuable to someone who requires tendon tissue replacement elsewhere. Number 7. Palmaris Longest Tendon. Other muscles and tendons in the contemporary human body are left over from evolution and no longer perform a defined or vital purpose. The palmaris longus is a tendon on the palm side of the wrist that is totally missing in around 16% of people, it isn't essential for the rest of US and may be removed without creating any difficulties. It's really rather handy for folks who want tendon grafts elsewhere surgeons may take it and install it where it'll be more effective. Number 6. Ear Muscles. My childhood closest friend could wiggle her ears, but as far as I could tell, the technique was exclusively used to entertain fellow grade schoolers. We all have weak, inefficient copies of the muscles surrounding our ears that would have let our evolutionary forefathers swivel their ears in the direction of a sound, as a rabbit does. The muscles around the ear closest to the noise still quiver when we hear an unexpected sound behind us. Number 5. Semilunar Fold in the Eye. The nictitating membrane is a semi-transparent additional eyelid seen on many mammals, birds, reptiles, and sharks. It swipes across the eye from the inner corner. This additional eyelid shields the eye from dirt and damage, as well as keeps the cornea wet. The third eyelid has been reduced to a fleshy fold in the corner of the eye in humans and most other primates, but it serves no use. Because we use our hands to collect food rather than attacking creatures with our lips or digging about in fields with our faces, we have evolved to require less eye protection. Number 4. Appendix. This is another evolutionary remnant that isn't just ineffective but also creates issues when infected. The appendix, a tiny structure near the beginning of the big intestine, was highlighted by Charles Darwin as an example of a vestigial digestive mechanism that had been rendered useless in apes and humans when we moved from eating grass to primarily fruit. However, scientists have recently discovered that several other animals have appendices, including koalas and beavers. According to Scientific American, the small organ might be a component of the immune system, boosting the body's defenses by keeping good gut flora. Number 3. Wisdom Teeth. Early humans had larger jaws than we have, with enough room on top and bottom for the third set of molars. Because our brains have developed to take up more space in our skulls, those teeth don't always fit in our smaller mouths, they form inside the gums but can cause discomfort and infections if they don't have enough room to emerge, so they're commonly pulled. Number 2. Tailbone. The coccyx is a collection of just a few vertebrae near the bottom of our spines shared by humans and our closest relatives, the great apes, chimps, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans. It's a vestige of what, in many other animals, develops into a tail for wagging, dogs, gripping tree branches, monkeys, or balancing on top of fences, cats, squirrels. Fish, reptiles, and birds all have tails, which may be traced all the way back to our earliest vertebrate ancestors. According to life science, experts suggest that because no members of what we consider early human species had tails, they may have gotten in the way when our ancestors began walking upright, but we never entirely lost the trait. At roughly four weeks of pregnancy, human embryos grow tails for a short time. Number 1. Goosebumps. My guinea pig Chester appears like a giant white fluff ball on cold mornings because his fur stands up to create a layer of insulation around his body. Most animals can do this, and our forefathers did as well, with the added benefit of a full body covering. Modern humans have lost their thick coating of body hair, maybe to allow them to release body heat on the savannas, or perhaps to escape some hazardous parasites, but we have kept the ability to contract microscopic muscles in our skin when we are cold or terrified, similar to a cat fighting a dog. What do you think about our video? Let us know in the comment box below. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Thank you.